What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Pack Pride Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Smith, here with a very special guest this week, NC State basketball signee and future guard for NC State in a, in a very short amount of time, Michael O'Connell. Uh, first of all, Michael, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be on here, and I appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. I know you're joining us from New York. You're you're kind of visiting home a little bit before you move to NC State, right? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I know we were just talking about it. Where in where in New York are you at right now, man? Uh, Long Island, New York. Okay. So you enjoying it there? Getting a little bit of time with family before you come back? Uh, exactly. Yeah, just seeing some family, some friends before I uh, head out to state. So I'm excited. Gotcha, man. Well, before we really get things started, I want to remind our listeners, as always, visit our iTunes and Google Play Store. Give us a rating if you enjoy the podcast and help get the word out there to the rest of Wolfpack Nation. Also, make sure to check out all our Pack Pride's coverage throughout the rest of the football and basketball offseason uh, leading into what will be the season in just a few short months. Uh, $1 for the first month or 30% off for one year. Also running a deal right now, 50% off for the first year. So head over to packpride.com to find out more about becoming a premium subscriber. I uh, also have to give a shout out to the Scott Wood Home Lending Team. If you see it up there in the top corner, uh, is there anything this man can't do after a successful career at NC State playing professional basketball? Scott has turned his sights on conquering the mortgage world. Reach out to him today if you're interested in financing the purchase or build of your dream home. Just looking to purchase your first investment property or just to buy a land. As an ever-present face in the community, his large network base can help connect you to the perfect builders and realtors out there to make your buying slash building experience as seamless as possible. His vast product base allows for each customer to receive their own tailor loan to fit their needs from the traditional W-2 earner to the unique self-employed business owner. So home ownership is much closer than you might think. Great rates in 50 states. Yes, you heard that right. The ability to lend in all 50 states. Scott is looking forward to sending out those pre-approvals and getting your home journey started. So they can also lend in New York. So I'll just go ahead and throw that out there uh, from where Michael is joining us right now. Um, so first of all, for you, before we jump into all the questions, uh, we mentioned, obviously, you're coming to NC State soon. Just graduated from Stanford. Uh, you know, when do you arrive at NC State officially? I uh, officially arrive on Thursday. I'm going to fly up and start doing all like the pre-exam and pre-test to get ready to start working out with the team. Okay, I got you. And so you actually start working out, what, like beginning of next Monday? I believe so, but I'm not fully positive. Okay, I got you, man. <laughs> You'll find all that out when you get in, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got you. And so when it comes to NC State, obviously, you, know, you transfer from Stanford, uh, you open things up, you looked at several different schools, Wichita State, I know Notre Dame was one of them as well. You know, what made you choose NC State and and what made that, you know, the place that you wanted to commit? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just is the fit for basketball. You know, I, I, mean, I saw myself um, being a part of the fa uh, family there with the coaching staff, the team, the school. Um, I think it was a great fit for my next two years to, you know, go there and uh, thrive in basketball, thrive as being a person, thrive in building relationships. And at overall, it just felt like the best situation for myself. So, um I made that decision and I'm excited. So, yeah. And to take a step back really quickly, you know, obviously coming out of, uh, out of New York, you, you committed to Stanford for basketball. You were previously committed uh, to Maryland for lacrosse, correct? Uh, yes. yes. What made the decision, you know, why did you decide to switch from, from lacrosse to, to basketball? <laughs> yeah, there was, I mean, there was a lot going on. It was during the COVID, like the COVID spring, COVID summer. Yeah. Um, you know, there was uh influx of guys going to Maryland you know my class would have been like 30 guys so and I hadn't played lacrosse in a while so I was thinking about making a move um ended up getting getting an offer from Stanford um to keep the story short and it was just uh, tough to pass up I know it's a great academic school um also with great basketball um so I was excited to you know chase that chase that journey chase that dream and your brother played at Maryland for a few years and, and also made the switch to basketball correct yeah, so he played played there four years. He won a national championship there, which is pretty cool. Um, and then he switched to back home in St. John's, and he played for played for you. Yeah, I was gonna say, did that kind of have any any sway for you to see that journey and and then make that decision as well? Uh, you know, honestly, honestly, not too much. You know, I kind of even he said like it's your it's your it's your journey. You know, it's not mine. So um, he was there to help me out. You know, guide me through some things when I had some questions. But you know, it was mostly kind of my own thing. You know. And I want to pave my own path. Yeah, I got you. And the last three years that you spent at Stanford, 
you know, what did you learn from from those three years, not just as a you know a person off the court, but really as a player as well? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess one of the biggest things I've learned is just learning how to handle adversity and failure. You know, um, I feel like that's college basketball is just a great place to learn that. You know, it's not always going to be pretty. You know, it's not always going to be easy. You're going to have to work your tail off every day um, and things still might not go right. So just learning how to handle that pressure, handle that adversity every day um, and trying to get better is something that I've really kind of taken away even been able to apply off the court, you know, if it's in school, relationships, stuff like that. Um, not everything's going to be perfect and you got to learn to work through that and just keep working hard. And we just talked about it. You spent three years at Stanford. You've already graduated. One of the, you know, more difficult uh, <laughs> academic institutions in the country. Uh, you know, how difficult was it to graduate in three years and how rewarding is it to have that diploma after three years already? Yeah, I mean, it definitely wasn't easy, uh, but it was uh, it's definitely rewarding. I mean, since I came in from freshman year, I just been taking like a, a good chunk of classes and I wasn't even thinking much about it, just kind of how it worked out. Uh, me and my other teammate actually were on the same same track. So we just were always taking kind of the same classes in the economics core um, all as, as, long, as well as basketball. And it just ended up working out where I was close to graduating. So it was definitely difficult along the way, but. You know, I'm excited to happen and um, it feels really rewarding to, you know, graduate from a prestigious college like that. So I was going to say, what, you know, how difficult was it to kind of balance all those things? Like how much of a, a multitasker did you have to be to, to balance everything? Yeah, I mean, we were uh, we were doing you know, homeworks or studying for tests right up until the game times and stuff like that. It wasn't it wasn't like we had a lot of time to balance. But, you know, it kind of cuts into, you know, your personal life. You have to focus a little more on, you know, your your job, which is basketball, and then school, which you're there for too. So, it, you know, you got to put a little more emphasis on those two things and take cut back in the other aspects of life, which is fine. No, that's the the risk I was willing to take coming to the school, but it's definitely a definitely a challenge at times. And you know, I, I don't know these things, so I'm going to ask you and make sure. But you know, what did you major in at Stanford, and and what are your plans education wise when you arrive at NC State? Yeah, so I was an uh, economics major uh, at Stanford, and when I go to NC State, I'm looking to do a more finance uh, path when I get there. So I'm still trying to figure out which classes I'm going to be exactly taking for these next two years, next two years and still mapping out like, how I'm going to approach it. Okay. So you're already looking for your master's, right? Yes. <laughs> and you have two years at NC state to, to play as well. So uh, obviously plenty of time to get those things done. Might not have to be on as fast of a course, unless you're trying to get a double master's. I don't know exactly what your plan is, but uh, that would be a lot to fit into two years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you talked earlier about the fit, you know, on the court uh, with NC State and, and seeing that fit. You know, how well do you see yourself really fitting into Kevin Keats' system? I believe extremely well. I mean, they love to play fast and that's something I've always, you know, loved to do and want to do. And they love running high pick and rolls. And that's kind of that's my favorite thing to do. I feel like I can make pretty good reads off them, whether it's, you know, getting my, to my own shot or getting guys involved and facilitating the ball. So, I mean, I'm definitely excited to do that. I like to play pressure basketball on the defense uh, end. So I, I think it's going to be a great fit. And what's the biggest change when you look at you know NC State style of play compared to Stanford? You obviously mentioned you wanted to play more you know up tempo, maybe faster pace. Is that something that you feel like is a massive change from what you were doing at Stanford? Uh, at times, I would say you know at Stanford we definitely like to play fast, but we also would slow it down and control and depend on where we're playing. Um, but I would say yeah, the fast pace is going to be something that I'm going to have to really get adjust to when you're playing pretty much a full game of just up and down, you know, fast pace, high uh, pick and ball screen and quick reads. So that's going to be something that's going to be um, very different from Stanford. And I know obviously every year you've, you've played, you know, the assists have been there for you. Uh, you've been somebody that's able to, you know, control the ball uh, and be able to move the ball and get guys open looks. Do you feel as though being, you know, coming to NC state that you have a, a bigger, a bigger chance to be more of an offensive piece? I, yeah, for sure. I mean, Coach Keats kind of made it loud and clear for me that when I come here, I need to take more shots and be more aggressive and not not come here and just four shots, but take the right shots when they're available to me um, and have the confidence to go out there and do so. You know, he's he wants to with me and the coaching staff and the team you know, be working on these shots at practice you know, and individual workouts, stuff like that, and be prepared for when in the game, I'm confident to take them. And he's also very confident in me to take those shots. So, yeah, he's definitely, like I said, made it loud and clear. He wants me to come in and get up more shots than I did before. 
And what was, I don't know, I mean, early on, what were those conversations like with, with Coach Keats and, you know, how much has he kind of, you know, really helped you along over these last several weeks to get you prepared? Because you did have a little bit of time before you actually come to NC State. Yeah, I mean, uh, after after I committed, it was kind of just consistently, you know, the communication was pretty clear. I mean, they're telling me what they want me to be working on, um, stuff to keep, keep getting better at and stuff stuff to keep um, just fine, fine tuning my skills. Uh, and then just like, like I said, my fit, how it's going to be, what I should be prepared for, all that kind of just small details. But when, when I get there, we can, you know, land on my feet and start running. And I know obviously he's never coached you before, but Joel Justice – uh, coached against you, obviously, yeah. when you were at Sanford, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when he was at Arizona State. You know, how impactful was he in, in your recruitment and, and reaching out to you? And what were those early talks like as well? Yeah, I would say it's pretty impactful. I mean, like you said, I, I played against him. So that's something that's pretty helpful to know that I've had a coach who had to, you know, scout against me. So he knows my strengths, weaknesses, so I can help in the development side of things. But also, I just think he's a great coach. So having a great coach like that want you to come play for their program, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful. And then obviously over that little short time, you, we still built like a pretty good bond and, you know, we continue to talk till today. Uh, so it wasn't like I just committed and they just said, all right, see ya. Uh, they still keep that strong connection um, and still building that bond. So uh, he definitely played a pretty, pretty big role in my commitment. And I know it's been like a month now at this point, but you committed to them while you're on campus. You know, what was that moment like when you, you told Coach Keats and, and Coach Justice about you committing to NC State? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was great. You know, I was, I was super pumped. Uh, and when I told them, I mean, they were super excited. You know, it was a uh, hugs all around. But it was just a, it was a great moment. You know, I found uh, found my next family, found my next spot and they were super excited for it. So it's uh, it was just, it was a great feeling all around. And. I want to go back a little bit. We talked a little bit about you you potentially becoming a bigger, you know, offensive player at NC State. But how much pride do you take in being a distributor too, a guy that can, you know, get open looks for other players? I mean, I take a great deal of pride. Um, because at the end of the day, I mean it's great to be be able to score, but if I can't get my teammates involved, you know, it's kinda it's kinda not pointless, but it's hard to be out there um and be an impactful player. So I think I think that skill of mine um helps me be on the court one and helps our team went to, and you know, win these bigger games, play better against these teams, handle pressure, and be able to get everyone involved um, and build that chemistry on the court. You know, I get to when I get to these workouts, and I get to find out where where certain guys like to shoot from. You know, how they like to receive the ball, especially if it's a bigger, you know, a lob or a bounce pass, stuff like that. So, you know, over these next few weeks, when I get there, building that chemistry and learning all these different things about uh, the players will be be really helpful for when I get on the court and I'm playing with the guys. And I wanted to ask, too, about the, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the lacrosse background. It seems like, you know, that's that's helped with the physicality on the court as well. Being a guy that you know, isn't afraid to take on contact and isn't afraid to, you know, even as a guard to get in there and try to get rebounds on the ball, things like that. That's something that's going to be critical at NC State. Uh, you know, how much pride do you take in, in that element of your game, too? Yeah, I mean, basketball and lacrosse are extremely similar in, like, the different, like, concepts of play style and even, like, physicality. So I think that playing lacrosse growing up, it has really helped translate onto the basketball court. Like, kind of like you said, you know, being able to be physical, um, being able to play through contact, uh, defensively able to, you know, use your body in different angles. Um, it's been it's been very helpful. And then especially, you know, on the offensive side of things, you know, in lacrosse, when you're running up the field, you got to be able to see everything. And obviously, it's a bigger field, um, more players. So being able to make the right read, right, make the right pass with everything going on, all these different defenders trying to either take the ball from you or intercept it. And it's been very helpful, uh, to say the least, when, when it comes on to the basketball court. And at NC State, you were one of, of six new players uh, that were added to the transfer portal. Uh, and then that also doesn't even include a newcomer in, in Dennis Parker that will be coming into the program as well. You know, how important do you feel like it's going to be to to start immediately building that bond once you arrive at NC State and and having that throughout the season? Yeah, I think it's going to be a extremely important part of our season and our success. Um, I'm excited to get out there, and then it's going to be nice, you know, obviously on the court building that chemistry where you're actually, like I said, learning how each, each other play, but also off the court is where you build like the real relationships, you know, hanging out, doing stuff like that, grabbing food, and really really connecting. So when you become up to a more like real level with each other, where it's not just like a surface level friendship, it makes it easier on the court when say things are going wrong. I know I can communicate with this guy because, you know, we've been 
bonding. We've been getting closer together. So it's not going to be like it's a more personal thing, but rather like I'm trying to win. I know you're trying to win. So let's like figure this out quick in the moment and we're not getting mad at each other um, or getting over over stress, stuff like that. So it's going to be it's going to be a huge part of our, our journey and our success. And I'm very excited for it. And going back to that official visit, were any of the guys on, on campus at that time? I know obviously the coaches were there with you, but were any of the players on, on campus at the time? Um, not many. Just KJ Keats was on campus. But besides that, that was that was it. Okay, I got you. So this will be like your first time really when you get there at NC State later this week to, to really get to meet the guys. I mean, how much are you looking forward to that element of it too? I'm super excited. I mean, we, we're on like a, you know, like group tech, stuff like that, you know, so we've been talking back and forth, you know, kind of getting to know the guys, but it's not, it's not obviously the same as when you really meet them in person. So I'm definitely excited for when I get on campus. All right. And my last thing for you, when it comes to your expectations at NC State next year, what should people uh, expect from you and, and what are you expecting from yourself next season yeah I guess what, what should people expect from me I mean when I get out of the court I'm gonna I'm giving it my all you know I'm, I'm trying to win no matter what it's gonna be for me if it's just I gotta go out there and take 15 charges or I gotta get 18 like stuff like that like I'm gonna do whatever it takes for this team to win I'm gonna play my hardest from whistle to whistle uh and then for myself uh, I mean I guess the same thing you know I gotta make sure I'm doing that uh but also you know just um, I'm going to be pumping up the crowd and getting, getting really involved with the fans, stuff like that. Uh, and then knocking down shots and, you know, hopefully, hopefully leading this team to the NCAA tournament again. I thought you were going to say more, uh, more shots again, <laughs> whatever, listen, I'll take it, but whatever the team needs at that moment, you know, that's exactly what I think people want to hear. All right. Well, Michael, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you jumping on with us. Of course. Appreciate you for having me. All right, guys. Well, thank you again to everybody for listening to the Pack Pride podcast. We'll talk to you again soon.